untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a black white cleric tribal deck featuring four copies of Shadow Rite Priest, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Two mana, two two, giving other clerics we control plus one plus one, and for five mana we can tap it, sacrifice another cleric to search our library for a black creature card and put it straight onto the battlefield. So that's the reason why we have one copy of Toxrel, the corrosive in our deck, which we can search up with our Shadow Rite Priest as early as turn five. Seven mana, seven seven, saying. At the beginning of each end step, including the opponent's end step, put a slime counter on each creature you don't control, and those creatures get minus one minus one for each slime counter on them. And whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter on it dies, you get to make a one one black slug creature token. You can also pay blue and a black to sacrifice a slug and draw a card, although we don't have any blue mana in the current mana base. Could potentially play Rafine's Tower as an extra dual land that can also make the blue necessary to activate Toxtrol, but for the most part, we're happy making one one slug tokens while decimating the opponent's board. And then the rest of our deck also has a ton of life gain synergy, which is kind of highlighted by Voice of the Blessed, a 2 mana 2-2, two, two, saying whenever we gain life, put a plus 1 counter on it, and as long as it has 4 or more counters, it gains Flying and Vigilance, with 10 or more counters also indestructible, and we've got a ton of ways to gain life, starting at 1 mana with Lunark Veteran, a 1-1 one, one that gains 1 life whenever another creature enters under our control, can also be Disturbed out of the graveyard, and even if the Disturbed version is still a Cleric that we can maybe sacrifice to our Shadow Rite priest, two copies of Traveling Minister, which can also gain one life and give a creature one extra power if we activate it at sorcery speed, and then at two mana there's the Sadistic Pilgrim, which will also gain one life whenever another creature enters under our control on a 2-2 with Death Touch, and whenever another creature dies each opponent loses one life. And then we also have the Missionary, which is a 2-3 lifelink to enable our life gain synergies, can also be kicked later in the game to get back a creature from our graveyard to our hand. And then at 3 mana, Inspiring Overseer also gains a life when it enters, in addition to drawing a card on a 2-1 flyer. And Markov Purifier, a 2-3 lifelink. And end of turn, if we gained life, we can pay 2 mana. And if we do draw a card, we also have the Corrupted Bishop, which can give our humans a lifelink until end of turn for 2 mana. A 2-3 creature that when it enters or another non-token human we control dies, we lose 1 life and make a 1-1 one -one human token. And there's plenty of humans throughout the deck. And if we end up at exactly 13 life by the end of our turn, we can pay 6 mana to transform Corrupted Bishop into Ormondal, the Corrupter, a 6-6 six -six Flying Trample lifelink that can sacrifice another creature to draw a card, so that's also a fun one. And then we've got even more life gain with a Wandering Emperor, which can exile tapped creatures and gain two life with a minus two, make additional Samurai tokens as well, and Sarah Paragon, a 3-4 flyer that once each turn can replay a permanent with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard, and then if that permanent would be put into our graveyard, it gets exiled and we gain 2 life instead. Also nice synergy with our two fetch lands, which will now gain 3 life in addition to getting an extra land, and those can also potentially grow our Voice of the Blessed. And Paragon also just gives us that late game recursion to win the grindier matchups by replaying our creatures out of the graveyard. And then a Peacekeeper doesn't have any life gain synergy, but still a 3-3 Cleric with Vigilance that can disrupt the opponent's curve by taking a look at the opponent's hand, making a spell too more expensive to cast, and also affects activated abilities of things that may already be in play, which can also come up. And then Infernal Grasp as our removal spell of choice, destroying any creature at instant speed at the cost of 2 life, which we can easily make up for. And then, yeah, Toxrel for the most part we're hoping not to draw, since we want to tutor it up with Shadow Rite Priest, but at 7 mana we could technically still cast it. And then, as we've said, we could make room for Rafine's Tower to use the activated ability, but for the most part our deck wants to be curving out, so we want to avoid tap lands if possible. And then the mana base also includes two copies of Secluded Courtyard, naming Cleric, which can make it easier to cast a turn to Voice of the Blessed. And then Storefront to synergize with Sarah Paragon can also gain life to grow Voice of the Blessed. And then we've got our eight rare dual lands, the Channel Lands, Abandoned Mire, and Iganjo also give us a bit more interaction. And then seven planes to Swamp. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand can gain quite a bit of life here. Between veteran, pilgrim, and bishop. So we'll be able to pay for the two life quite easily. Now I guess I won't be able to play pilgrim on curve right now. So we'll just go with minister. Could have also skipped veteran to make sure we can play pilgrim on curve. Might have been worth it. 
Stompers, your opponent's ramping. Ooh, Shadow Rite Priest is tempting. Although I might be able to double spell next turn if we draw a black source. Still go with Bishop. And then might as well activate here to get an extra point of life. Another Stomper, so our opponent's close to enabling them. And a Tail Swipe takes out Jaren. Alright, so... Could go Pilgrim plus Minister, or Priest plus Minister. Next turn I still wouldn't be able to activate the Priest necessarily, so I think I like Pilgrim. And then we can still attack with our Death Toucher. Also fine to trade for a Stomper. Ooh, a Silverback Elder. That's definitely worth taking out. And we drew the Swamp. I guess we'll start here. Suppose I can pump Veteran twice and then just attack with Pilgrim as a... 3-3 three, three here. Could be bad if our opponent had a tail swipe to kill Priest at instant speed, but it didn't seem to be the case. So our opponent accepts the trades. And then next turn we can maybe untap with Priest and get Toxtril in play. That seems good. So we'll gain a life first. Start shrinking down the silver back. And then next turn we can activate again. And hopefully take over the game. Another Stomper. Triggers Elder. Can gain four. Or find a land. At least Doxrill is safe from a potential tail swipe killing it. And it's not going to take too long for Toxrill to decimate the opponent's board. Alright, so get back Veteran. And then I probably keep the Flyer and Sacrifice Minister. And what do we want to get next? Could get Purifier, although I won't be able to pay the 2 this turn. So maybe I get another Shadow Rite Priest. And then next turn I can get Purifier and uh, pay the two. Ooh, a natural growth? That's scary. Although Toxrill still big enough to block. Elder finds another land presumably or maybe gains four. So still no good attacks, despite an unnatural growth, just goes to show how powerful Toxrill is. And then now attack with our flyer, sacrifice it to a priest. Although I guess if I do that, then I don't gain the life to pay in the first place, so I actually have to sacrifice the other priest here. Get Purifier, pay the two. Could also get Sadistic Pilgrim, but this seems fine. Keep Abandoned Mire to maybe get back Toxrill if something were to happen to it. Okay. Oddity, they can actually transform here. So there's going to be an 8 8 times two with a natural growth. So yeah, we could still be in a bit of trouble. Although I guess at 33, we can take a hit. So gets in for 16, we'll take it. And then now Peacekeeper. 
I guess we could name Loam Speaker to make its ability more expensive. But how about we play Shadow Rite Priests and then I could get Sadistic Pilgrim, which can block their large creature as well. Can attack with Toxtril and Purifier. What if I attack with everyone? Opponent chumps, chumps. Takes five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they're not quite dead, I don't think. But either way, we're in a commanding position. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Up against Monorets with a turn one Phoenix chick. So the life gain's gonna be quite valuable. Not sure if we want Infernal Grasp, turn 2, or maybe play a Shadow Rite Priest. Turn 3, Purifier, maybe. Interesting, Voice of the Blast. So I could play Voice and then put a counter on it right away, so they would need Lightning Strike to kill it to get past it. And then, if they do, next turn Purifier will be hard to kill for the opponent. So let's try that. Activated now, so they cannot respond with a 2 damage burn spell. Okay. Minister can also only be used at sorcery speed. Opponent does have the lightning strike, sadly. But hopefully that means they are less likely to answer purifier. And then I value gaining one more than I do dealing one damage. There's a Raichu, so they can grow the adversary to attack past Purifier. Okay. We have answers to Raichu, at least. And a fourth line is nice. So now... Play Shadow Rite Priest, keep up Infernal Grasp, seems good. Or do I just attack for three? Up to nine. That may be safer. Although this holds off Adversary for as long as we control Shadow Rite Priest, that is. I think we pass. Could still die to another burn spell between the two damage of Infernal Grasp and the Phoenix Chick attacking. Another Raichu. Yep. Still gotta kill one now before it gets a chance to put a counter somewhere. And then I think I'm just dead to the Phoenix Chick getting a plus one counter and their opponent attacking with all. Although, never mind, I guess we would still gain three of lifelink before damage completely resolves. Our opponent thinking along and hard. They might just end up putting a counter on the Raiju. And then... Might have to double block it, but nope, just a Phoenix Chick attacking. Okay, so and now I could attack with a 4-powered Purifier and then get Toxrill. That looks good. We'll instantly kill the Phoenix Chick and stabilize the ground. As we also get an extra 1-1 one, one slug. Now I guess the counters from Toxrill also count as modifications, so that sort of helps the Raiju to deal more damage in a way. But uh, at 8 life with 2 blockers I feel relatively safe. It's gonna be a Shivan Devastator for 4. Okay, that gets us close to dead. Raiju deals 2, 4 more from Devastator, puts us to 2. And a Phoenix Chick, luckily they cannot get back. So kill Raiju, Trump Adversary. So we needed the Slug to survive. Get another one. And then now a Gunjo can help, or we can play Overseer. 
Purifier gets to attack again. And we can even channel this for two mana thanks to Toxrill. So we have options. But um, feel pretty good attacking with all these. That's 12. And passing the turn. And then I'm not going to pay keep up my Ganjo. Just to be safe. And then next turn we should be able to close out the game. Another Raichu. Well, they had some heavy hitters here. But uh, I don't think that's going to be enough. Plus we could always Infernal Grass before they attack. Awesome. So close game here against Monorad. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And our hand has potential. Especially if Shadow Rite Priest survives. Voice of the Blasts synergizes with a life linking purifier. And if our opponent has to remove the first two, they're less likely to answer our priest. So our opponent Grixis colors. Make that four colors, maybe a domain deck. Briefcase, so it could be a five color Kami War deck as well. Well, I think I like Purifier over Veteran, but it's close. We could double spell Veteran plus Shadow Rite Priest. Although next turn I can maybe attack and then pay the two to draw. And if I play Veteran next turn, play Purifier, I'll only have one mana to pay. So yeah, we'll hit for two, play Purifier. And then next turn maybe... Play Shadow Rite Priest, attack, pay the two to draw, make it more likely we can pay five next turn. Fable of the Mirror Breaker on three, always good. Although the plus one plus one here is going to be a big deal. Question is whether voice attacks, if they block then I could Cast Infernal Grasp, which may still be worth it. Although I would really like to pay two to draw end of turn. All right, opponent chumps. And then they will get to attack with the Shaman here potentially. I just want to find land five. Discarding a Titan of Industry, that's scary. Still have the option of uh, Veteran plus Corrupted Bishop next turn. Or maybe Veteran plus Minister, pay two. And the Shaman attacks, we'll take two. Alright, another Shadow Rite Priest. Could be worth it, as we're just getting in for a ton of damage here. I might see removal. Could have played Veteran plus Minister to grow a Voice of the Blessed, who a Prayer of Binding, eh? So gets to exile something, goes for Purifier, sure. Yeah, I think I'm okay going Veteran plus Minister. So missed out on plus one counter or two here. But otherwise I might have been uh, better off drawing. Zero points at eight. And we're just a land away from activating Shadow Rite Priest to get Toxrill. There's a Kami War, however. Exile's Voice of the Blessed. And then next turn they could bounce a Toxtril that we search up. So probably better off playing another Shadow Rite Priest, Killing Reflection, and that might just be game over here. As we have three creatures going through. So just a good old beatdown draw. Defeating the Kami War. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand could use an extra land or two. 
Toxrill and opening hands also not ideal. Hmm, maybe this is a mulligan? I do like Voice of the Blast plus Veteran, and Missionary as another lifelinker, but Toxrill in hand means we won't be able to tutor it up as easily. So we'll take a mulligan. Okay, this might be better. One Paragon can go. And then we're looking at Pilgrim into Voice of the Blast. Although we could also mix it up. And now with a double Pilgrim, this might be the better way to go. Attack for two. I guess I could have an Igancho, which would have been a reason to voice first. Four mana. Time for Shieldred? Nope, Rata Drabic is their opponent uh, a Legends deck. Okay, we can play another voice, grows the first one, attack with both. And then if they trade for Sadistic Pilgrim, I can play another one. Could even play another Pilgrim just to grow Voice of the Blessed. Which may honestly be worth it. And we can always get it back with Sarah Paragon later. Oh, I meant to keep the other one that was untapped. Don't think it's gonna matter too much. Five mana. Bones at ten. Double Voice of the Blessed putting in work and their shield root at long last. And yeah, now Inspiring Overseer gains life twice, so both our voices gain flying and we can attack for the win. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Courtyard on Cleric. Turn two, Pilgrim. Turn three, maybe Overseer before playing Priest. Opponent on a green deck with a new space lines. Blue green and visionary. Alright, let's have a look with Peacekeeper. Can attack first. Peacekeeper can also name Visionary, which would make its ability more expensive to activate. And we see Consuming Tide, which can bounce our stuff back. Survey for ramp, War Chief. Next turn the opponent would probably play either Stomper or Activate Visionary. So we could name Visionary. Consuming Tide, I guess, is also annoying. So we could name the Sweeper, although our opponent would still be able to stabilize the board with a War Chief eventually. So it's a close call. Yeah, I guess naming Visionary doesn't throw off their curve enough. So maybe I do just name War Chief, although they can get to 7 mana pretty quickly. Alright, you know what, let's name Consuming Tide. And then just try to out-aggro the opponent here. Can play Priest plus Infernal Grasp. Kill Visionary if we'd like. Opponent considering if they want to chump, they do. So we'll keep Infernal Grasp to answer their uh, War Chief, perhaps. And then next turn again, still Consuming Tide. Opponent just goes for Survey. So I can kill Stomper. So it no longer gets to attack or block. And then now I can hit for 7 and grab Toxrill. And then Consuming Tide means I can keep Toxrill in play. And that should be pretty good. And we 
which creature to sacrifice is a question. Probably sacrifice Pilgrim, keep Peacekeeper. Make sure they have to tap out to play Consuming Tide. And this should be lethal. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand has potential. Just need to make sure we can get to 5 eventually, but on the draw we're more likely to hit our land drops. And then turn 1, probably go for Veteran. Turn 2, maybe Veteran plus Fetch a Swamp. And then we can pump our team with Priest. Opponent Mono Green with a Gala Greeters. Okay. I think we stick to the plan. And then I'm fine offering the trade. And then next turn we could double spell Veteran into Priest. Beast Callers carry. Bone goes for treasure. So at least we will be able to attack with all here. And then Emperor being able to exile a Beast Caller so it doesn't get to move its counters is also helpful. But mostly hoping Priest survives so we can eventually activate it to find Toxrill. A Loam Speaker triggers both. Opponent makes another treasure, so next turn they could cast something expensive. Beast Caller up to a 4 4 already. So killing it with Infernal Grasp is not really gonna enable an attack. Opponent actually hitting us for 4. And Overseer is not bad. Okay. So I could try to attack with the Veterans. If our opponent double blocks with a Loam Speaker, I can kill it. Does that even help me much? Probably not. And then I would also prefer to keep Infernal Grasp for the big creature that they're gonna ramp into. So I think we just play Overseer in case we draw tap lands. Or I could play Emperor Exile Beast Caller right now. That's also a strategy. Although playing Overseer makes it more likely I can activate Priest next turn, which is the eventual win condition. So we'll try this. Another Overseer is not bad. So let's just chill. Alright, Silverback is a good one. Opponent keeps making treasure, so they might have more expensive cards in hand. And there's the caves, okay. So let's get Toxtril while we can. And uh, probably no point in attacking first. All the overs here is probably good to go. Gala Greeter is down. And a 7 7 is not going to be easy for the opponent to fight. Another Silverback. Yep. Opponent can gain quite a bit of life here. But they would need two fight spells to deal with Toxtril since I'm not blocking with it. Just another Stomper instead. Yeah, Toxtril has been very effective against these mono green decks with Silverback Elder. Maybe if they have a Defiler or Vigor, that can keep up with the minus one counters, but even then we get two minus one counters per turn cycle. And yeah, opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems okay. Just need to hit our land drops, but we have Overseer to draw. Paragon to get back Overseer as well. And even the Priest if it gets answered. Opponent on a red deck strangles our Veteran. Okay. So getting a little bit nervous here. 
since we really need to keep hitting those lands. And Infernal Grasp, while it can answer creatures, can be a bit painful against the red deck. So now I could also get back Veteran. Probably still better off killing the infantry, which will get out of hand, but it's going to cost me three life with this uh, caves. So it's quite painful. At least most of the cards in my hand can also gain life. And the braid kills priest. And a rabbit battery hits us for one. Alright, the land means I play overseer. If I didn't draw land, it would have been interesting whether we disturb veteran or keep up infernal grasp to kill a hasty four drop. But now I just want to keep hitting my land drops. Channeler can maybe transform here with a Kami's Flare. At least they didn't control a modified creature. Okay. So probably pass with a plan of exiling the Embodiment of Flame. And then Paragon... Doesn't have a fetch land to get back. But at Fort Toughness, also not trivial for the opponent to kill. Alright, Blazing Sky is kind of scary, but a backup Wandering Emperor is nice. So that solves that problem. Exiling it's definitely a cleaner answer than killing. Raichu, okay. Think we still let them attack, and then Emperor Exile, Blazing Sky, next turn Infernal Grasp Raichu. Opponent's gonna play around Emperor here. Fair enough. Do I Infernal Grasp the Raichu now? Or I could uh, Exile Raichu anyways, and then kill Blazing Sky. Since they could just keep playing around my Wandering Emperor and make things awkward. All right, land is good. So, kill Blazing Sky. Cost me one life. Bone's gonna exile the top two, most likely. Finding a land and an infantry, not the end of the world. So, plus on Samurai. Hit for three, and then between Veteran and Infernal Grasp, probably keep up Infernal Grasp. In case their last card is another hasty 4-drop. Alright, a Braid to kill my creature. So... They could try and equip the infantry with Rabbit Battery. In which case, I probably let that happen. Wait for them to attack so the battery doesn't get to attack Emperor. And then we should be able to take over with Paragon. And then I can tap in such a way that I can play a veteran for one mana. Still think I put a plus one counter on Paragon. Make it a bit harder to kill. Show them how we greet our enemies. Smoldering Egg comes a bit late. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Close to just hard casting Toxtral for seven. So yeah, we got to see our black-white clerics deck in action. And while of course a casual deck that I wouldn't recommend for the ranked ladder, where the mid-range decks reign supreme, at least now with the Meat Hook Massacre soon getting banned in standard, we're not gonna be facing as many sweepers, so maybe our tribal synergies get a time to shine. And then the Shadow Rite Priest has been quite impressive, getting our Toxtril, but then also staying in play to keep tutoring more black creatures, so it's possible we want to make room for a second expensive black creature to tutor up. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.